You can just start by saying your name, please. My name is Kaniki Street. So, Kaniki, what brought you to this panel today? Um, I like to cosplay, and I also do burlesque, so there's always need for props. So, is there anything in particular you're hoping to learn today, or just come by the same? Um, it, you know what? It's you can never um, you can never expand on your skills too much. So, you may just learn something, even something really small with painting or finishing, um, or you may learn something really big like um, LED, you know, circuit construction. So, yeah, cool. it, it, you can never stop learning. If you are any good at 3D modeling software like Maya or 3D Studio Max, you could actually go in and build your object in three-dimensional space, or some other people may have models available that you could download and view it in 3D space. And if you were going to go crazy and get something done with a CNC machine, this would uh, be a, the, the first step towards that. Next slide, please. Papakura is a hateful, on. hateful program. Yeah, it's not something I do very often, but it's a, a really cheap place to start. It's, it's essentially making stuff out of heavy cardstock or, or paper, and you take one of those 3D models that you might have from uh, your 3D Studio Max file, and it unwraps it into pieces that are flat that you print out, and there's a software called uh, Papakura Designer, I believe. And it does that all for you, and then you can print it out in pieces on your normal printer, and you basically just uh, put it all together with glue. Thank you. <laughs> but anyway, some people, if you look online, some people have done some really amazing, really realistic stuff like that for cheap. Next. All right, guys, so we're going to talk about supplies next, and uh, this may be a drier topic for some, but uh, next slide, please. I'd like to start out, um, everything here is, is made whether it's a master for a mold or it's a one-off prop, everything is going to be a combination of that. I'd say at least three materials. Um, definitely Vulcan takes the cake for using a wide variety of stuff. As you can see with his, his ma latest Mass Effect rifle, you can see all kinds of stuff that I'm about to cover. I think, I think Xander only uses one material, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> Zan Xander says this, but he makes almost everything out of MDF and styrene. Um, but that's still two, and, and I guess the, the main bullet point is that um, you don't necessarily have to be married to one thing. You don't have to make everything out of wood or plastic or, or you know, glass. Uh, <laughs> different things will be, and I have glass in some of my props, different parts are gonna be better for different applications. So there's a bunch of them we'll touch on, and there's a lot more information in PDF. Correct, all right, so uh, next slide, please. All right, acrylic. So acrylic is great for laser cutting, which we can't go too far into. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to drill. It's a little bit more expensive, and there are some other properties. Um, for a beginner, I would say probably avoid the acrylic, but once you get into the higher echelon, you can really make some fantastic stuff. So Vulcan's gravity gun is about half a laser cut acrylic, for example. Next slide, please. Okay, PVC sheet. This, this stuff is interesting. Bill really likes to use this stuff. It's, it comes in different thicknesses. It's, it's moderately, cheap to moderately expensive compared to, say, woods and other stuff. Um, it's, 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 it's great because you don't have to seal it when you're done. It's, it's almost like a, a dense, really dense PVC foam. It's, it's really interesting. Uh, Bill, you want to talk about how you use Sintra since you're the Sintra guy? Sure. That, that one specifically is cut into panels and then uh, attached with fiberglass and epoxy. But you can also heat it up and bend it over pieces and you can sand it and paint it to look like metal very easily. It's lightweight and it's very durable. Awesome. Next please. All right, PVC. Um, now there is a long way to do things, but the easy way is to go to the hardware store and pick up, you know, PVC pipe or ABS or whatever. And reason being is, you know, you don't want to wrap a piece of sheet material around an object and, and all that. Um, the only problem being is, you know, there's only a select few diameters. Obviously, these are made for plumbing. You can go to the electrical department in your hardware store. This is all at your hardware store. It's cheap stuff and you can get electrical conduit, and sometimes you can get different vari varying thicknesses. So if you want to really get precise, there's, there's ways to do that. <coughs> Next, please. All right, styrene. This is, this is a very friendly material. Um, it's a little harder to come by. I'd say the, only, the easy way to get it is to go to your hardware store and those for sale signs, garage sale signs, you know, they have those. It's definitely more expensive to get it this way, but if you want to sample to test out, that's how you would get it. And styrene is amazing for 
the laser cutting, you can scalp it with a razor and just simply break the piece. Um, it's, you can cut it with a pair of scissors in certain thicknesses. It's great stuff, and it's, it's great for detailing. It's great for, you know, if you have a really rough surface and you don't really feel like bonding everything, it's flat, you can just throw some styrene over it. Really great stuff, and vacuum forming as well, but we can't get too far. Uh, <laughs> Another thing that's really nice about it is, it is the, the sort of staff head that's in the upper right. Um, it comes in bars and um, half round, full round little U channels. You get it at like ra like model railway and hobby stores. So if you have really little intricate detail there, it's it's a nice way instead of trying to sculpt this little fine tiny line or a tiny line to just glue the part down. Um, it's a little pricey, like a pack of five of these little bars would be like six bucks. And you'll go through it a lot, but it saves a lot of time. Oh, yeah. All right. MDF. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the MDF guy, I guess. Uh, Harrison, you can see, uses it as well. But uh, for those of you who've seen my Maddox, that's it in the upper left-hand corner in the very early stages. And uh, I think I, I maybe used two, two or three pieces of plastic in there. Um, and the rest of it is, is completely MDF carved with a scroll saw and dremel. Um, Harrison uses MDF as well. Um, he does it more traditionally. He likes to use a Dremel and make his bevels very clean. I do it uh, and laminate the layers together. But MDF is very soft. Um, it's, it does have some health concerns. We can go over later if you guys want to ask about it. Um, it's got a it's, lot of health concerns. It's, yeah. it's poisonous. It, it's hard to seal. Uh, you're, yeah, not all, when you use MDF, it's a given you're going to be using filler primer, which is a, also a very fun paint to work with, and you can, it's, it's tough to seal. It's really tough to get a nice shiny finish on MDF compared to a nice wood or plastic. But the nice thing is you can get a four foot by eight foot sheet for about 12 bucks. Yeah. So, um, and it's really easy to come by, it's super cheap, and it's fairly easy to work with as well, just so long as you take into account that it is very toxic. Right. Yeah, definitely wear a respirator when working with MDF. It, it kicks out a formaldehyde gas. Urea formaldehyde, yes. Yeah. And it's about Anyways, Which uh, I'm told is not pleasant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, man. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I always wear my respirator. <laughs> what the hell you do? <laughs> sound, sound advice. Yeah. I'll be the guinea pig for that. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're going to go into traditional hardwoods. Um, and softwoods are, are, are not bad either. The thing about woods, though, as opposed to MDF, is it's a little bit more expensive um, and it has a grain. For a lathing, like as you can see in the left photo, on a lathe, you know, wood is king, obviously. Um, but it's, it, it's, it's, it's got a grain. And when you're working with more beginner tools, lower power tools, the grain will fight you when you're cutting these pieces. It's really hard to get that precision cut on everything if, if you're doing just wood. But it is very nice. It, it, it's, it, the edges are nice and clean. You don't have to seal it like MDF. It laminates together. It's mostly waterproof, which MDF isn't. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very versatile. Okay. Uh, craft foam. Alright, so <laughs> this is the foam that you find in like yoga mats. Sometimes it's sealed in vinyl. You can, you know, in this case, this is the sort of waffle garage mat kind of thing going on. And this is, as you can see, it's easily heat formed and it's, it's, it's great for armor. Um, I think this is off of uh, bio web. This is Harrison's project based on uh, a method on, I think, bio web. Yeah, my, my blade rip off of. My friend David's technique, actually. It's, yeah, it's it's pretty ingenious, and I'm sure you've seen at least a few of these at, at your local convention. Well, they've been walking. There's about, about, about a few um, Mass Effect cosplayers walking around. This is the kind of the preferred method for people doing Mass Effect cosplay right now because that's the right panel or the right uh, the right pattern to it. Um, it's really quick to work with. You can I knocked out a set of armor in about a week, and it's very cheap. So and it's it's easy on the tools. You just yeah. you need a razor, a Dremel, some sandpaper, and a heat gun or a hair dryer, and you can do. Incredible stuff. Uh, next, please. Polystyrene foam. So this is a good void filler for stuff that you're going to be building up that's organic, and then it's going to be needed to coat it and be coated in Bondo or some other sealant because if you just spray paint this stuff, it will dissolve. Well, Bondo will dissolve as well. Yeah, any any sort of polyester resin base will dissolve uh, polystyrene foam because light will dissolve light. Um, it's very fragile, but it's also very lightweight. So you have to find some. Some people paint gesso on it. Some people use. I, I use uh, urethane resin, and I think Xander yeah, done it at a time. Also. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's both and take the expanding foam. Okay. Uh, expanding foam is a very difficult material to work with. It's mostly used as a void filler. This was the body of my Big Daddy project, um, and I just used it to kind of block out the shape. It's not very accurate. You have to kind of polish out a lot of things on top of it. 
Um, I wouldn't really use this unless you're just trying to block out a big, heavy void area and you don't want to spend a lot of money getting something nice and, and perfect. Um, I guess we'll skip over that because that's kind of a, a singular purpose thing. Floris foam? Um, very similar. Yeah, very similar. It's incredibly brittle. It dents very easily. I used this on my portal gun when I had no idea what the hell I was doing with props. Um, as a consequence, it has to be repaired almost every time I take it off the shelf. Uh, Shaping it into the thing on the portal gun, not what I'd recommend. On the left, that's my M8, or my N7 that I made. Uh, you can fill a void and skim it with Bondo, and the nice thing is it won't dissolve. So um, using it kind of as a cheap filler is really the better application. It will crumble in your hands. Yeah. Uh, Poxy Skull, this is, I guess you could say, a more refined Bondo. It's great for these details. You mix up two, the two parts together, you sculpt it out. It hardens and it's easy to sand. It's, it's excellent for engravings and things like that. Almost all of this was done with Epoxy Sculpt. <laughs> I'm sure you all know about Bondo. Um, every every prop maker is my Bondo, it, it seems. Uh, it's, it's great for uh, you know, skimming things, covering up things. It's just, it's just a filler and it's, it's probably the most hated process of any project. If you're going to get into props, you're going to yep. get into Bondo. And lots of, in respirator, definitely, when you're using it and in, especially when you're sanding it, because you get tons and tons of dust. And don't do it in the same garage where your car is parked or else your car will be. Covered in a layer of layer of dust. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> All right, polyester resin. Okay, so this is this is kind of touches on mold making, but as far as just making things from scrap, this is great for surface cover coating things. Mainly, is what you're going to be using it for. Lots of fiberglass and then lots of of uh, bondo for that. Um, yeah, it's it's incredibly fragile and brittle. So anything you you use a fiberglass on top of should have a cloth base to it, because that's what gives it strength. If you're just using fiberglass, it's going to shatter like actual glass wood. Right. So the last thing is found objects, and anybody who's ever hunted through a uh, Michael's or a hardware store, and somebody's like, hey, can I help you with something? You're like, well, because I'm building a gun, so yeah. you probably can't. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, the lady at Michael's probably would have thought it'd be weird if I asked her, do you have a tiny human skull? I need this for my grenade launcher. Uh, but, uh, the best thing to do is, is go to places like craft stores uh, around holiday times because you're going to find stuff like this around Halloween and uh, you find um, make your own Christmas ornaments with these perfect little clear glass balls around Christmas. Um, those kinds of things will come in handy because uh, you're going to need a tiny human skull at some point in time. Uh, I mean, we've all been there. <laughs> you can get the bags of little googly eyes at the craft store super cheap and if you paint them it's like bam rivets. Yeah, the, the rivets on this helmet were made out of furniture tacks, so you don't always have to sculpt something. Mm -hmm.